All right, hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Nika Worm Cam. This is a camera made for the original Game Boy Advance, it's not made for the SP, and this was to try to capitalize on the fact that this is before the time when everyone had smartphones, and everyone's smartphone had at least one camera, if not two, on it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how it does. So as obviously, this is called the Worm Cam, trying to play off the um, popularity of the Worm Lights that they had for the Game Boy Color and original Game Boy. They actually were pr quite popular. Looking at the back, it seems to boast quite a few features, so let's go ahead and open this thing up and see how useful it actually is. It's quite a bit larger than I expected, with the small part in the front being the part that actually connects in the GBA cartridge slot, with a bigger back part that actually holds the battery, and also the connection port for the to connect it to your computer. It has a rotatable lens, so you can take photos of something in front of the Game Boy, or you take a photo of yourself. And also I noticed something pretty strange about the cartridge port slot that we were talking about earlier. It has no pins or contacts at all, it's just a solid piece of plastic. Because of that, it won't be able to fit into your SP even if you were to cut it up quite a bit. So you'll have to use an original Game Boy Advance for this. It fits in extremely tightly, and that definitely makes it very difficult to remove. Let's go ahead and boot it up and see how it works without having any contact pins. Do you recognize that sound? That's the sound your Game Boy Advance makes when it's entered multi-boot mode. Multi-boot mode is commonly used for when you're connecting to another title that has multiplayer download play, and it's also used when you connect to a GameCube for specific titles that support that. That essentially means the Worm Cam is streaming all the information directly to your Game Boy, instead of just loading it from a cartridge like normal. When you first enter the menu, you're presented with quite a few options, like viewing pictures and changing the lighting settings, but one thing you don't see an option for is taking a picture. I had to actually check the manual to find out that you have to press R in order to take pictures. That's always a good sign when your camera doesn't actually have a clear way to take photos. As soon as you press R, a picture is instantly taken. You're not given any type of preview or any type of adjustment for brightness or contrast or anything. It just instantly takes a photo. That's because there is no viewfinder. I'm guessing because everything has to be streamed through the link port. It's just not fast enough to be able to render a real-time preview of any kind. And that's a huge downside. When compared to something like the Game Boy Camera, which one, doesn't need a battery to back up your saves, and two, feeds all the information directly to the cartridge, you can get pretty much real-time previews, and you'd be able to take your photos when actually seeing what you're taking a picture of. Also, it has adjustments for brightness and contrast, so you can see everything before you actually take your picture. And moving back to the Worm Cam, initially I was not able to get it to take any pictures whatsoever. Every image I tried to take came out corrupted. No matter how many times I reset it, try to look at the settings, look at the manual, I could not get it to take a picture at all. Now even if we ignore the fact that I could have gotten a faulty camera despite it being brand new, we can go ahead and take a look at all those features they are advertising on the back. First one we'll look at is the editor. As you can see here, we can draw on the pictures and we can even add text. And that's pretty much about it. Now compared to the Game Boy Camera, which had quite a few options, including different compositing modes and a whole bunch of other stuff you can do, this completely pales in comparison. This thing cost $30 when it first came out, and even when compared to the much older Game Boy Camera, it's still extremely lacking in features. Not just in editing features, but just in general features as well. It only holds 20 pictures as opposed to 30, there's no viewfinder so you can't see what you're taking a picture of before, you can't adjust how the picture looks, and there's no real bonus features of any kind, there's nothing to do with the camera when you're not taking pictures. Unlike the Game Boy Camera, which had a whole ton of different options, you could play games, you could actually make your own music with it, and there are tons of hidden stuff too. There's unlockables for if you take a bunch of pictures, delete a bunch of pictures, do well in the games, there's just a whole bunch of more stuff you could do with it. It was a game and a camera both rolled into one. This is just a very low budget camera. Eventually by putting the camera and the object directly next to a light I was able to get some photos out of this thing but even those did not turn out very well. I imagine if you have a brand new working camera they'd be a little bit better but I still can't imagine them being even somewhat decent. And just flipping through them is extremely slow waiting at least a couple seconds for each picture to load. As for the issues I had with the interface I feel like a lot of these problems could be solved by using a direct 
cartridge system just like the original Game Boy Camera, but instead they wanted to use a link port, which is why everything's so slow. It's just like if you boot up a game on your Game Boy, it loads pretty much instantly, but if you load that same game on a separate Game Boy using the multiplayer feature, it takes quite a bit longer to load. Overall, it's a pretty interesting little device, but not exactly something I recommend to most people. If you collect weird, obscure Nintendo accessories, um, including unlicensed ones, then yeah, I mean, it's, you can get it for under $5, brand new in box. Um, but of course, there's a chance that you could have a completely broken one like me. So, if you collect weird stuff, I'd say go ahead and pick it up. But for just a general person, I'd say this is worth giving a pass. There's no real need for it. It's, it's not as fully featured as some of the other ones. It is the only camera for the Game Boy Advance, but for most people, I'd say if you just want something fun to take pictures with, just go with the original Game Boy camera. Alright, so I guess that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye.